Big Data Adventure Time! I am going to take a few minutes of your time and share with you my evolving perspective on big data and how maybe we can use it in a positive way and make better decisions. 20 seconds, look at me, time to spare. So I'm halfway between Finn the adventurer and Princess Bubblegum the scientist because I'm an ecologist. Ecology is all about the study of interactions, biotic, biotic, so between living organisms and biotic, abiotic, between living organisms and the environment. So we spend a lot of time looking at interactions and trying to build data sets to explain the dynamics of systems. In particular, I look at shrubs in deserts, just one shrub species. Sounds really simple, but we measure all the different interactors or players in the system, the plants, the bugs, the birds, and we try to piece together these really varied little data sets to make a big story to understand if we can use shrubs for management or restoration of deserts. Now that purple is terrible, but it, ecology is about connecting the dots. And you can see here, there's a lot of dots. And for me as an ecologist, and for many ecologists, the goal is to build these beautiful interaction webs. So not just whom eats whom like a food web, but horizontally. Not surprisingly, that looks like a big tangled ball of yarn. And so I propose that ecology, the study of interactions, can help us better understand and manage big data. So untangle, sort, link, thread, and best of all, knit together into beautiful patterns just like at Loop and Leaf. <laughs> so 775 million hits on big data in just 0.26 of a second. So big data are not static. We embody big data. Big data is the web. And big data are data sets that are so large and complex that it becomes difficult to process using traditional analytical procedures. So relatively satisfying uh, description. V is for vampire, and big data is all about V, and vampires too. Volume, variety, velocity. Volume, lots of it. Variety, lots of different things that we measure. And velocity, accrues really rapidly. And so that big data doesn't become a vampire on you, we start to think about veracity and variability. Walmart has developed a social genome index for each and every shopper where they blend this variety, these different kinds of data, for social network activities such as Twitter, proprietary data on purchasing in stores, and they try to figure out what people need at a particular point in space and time. Google.org looks at the queries that people do, sure I'm hot, feeling a little feverish, and they match that to traditional epi epidemiological signals to try and figure out the outbreak of flu, and it works almost perfectly. Crazy that in interacting with big data, we generate yet more big data that allows us to predict patterns that really matter. In environmental science, satellites circling the planet like crazy, collecting rich and diverse data sets on temperature and light and humidity. And the trick is to downscale that, taking this big data and reduce it to the scale of an organism that matters. So the microclimate or the lizard or the person that we actually experience. Another example of big data from my field, ecology, citizen scientists all over the world counting birds, butterflies, small mammals. We put all these really different data sets together and then as an ecologist we try to figure out abundance, how many things there are, and distribution, where are they found? Super useful. Big data adventure time, a challenge we cannot avoid. Big data is ubiquitous. And just as the definition of big data is all about the letter V, the challenges are all about the letter C. Capture, curation, context, and complexity analytics. Data, for me, my personal philosophy, is just one of many forms of evidence that we can use to try and make better decisions. Useful big data illuminate context, connections, or interactions. So in the best case, you have that big, beautiful ball of yarn, and you can use it to make decisions based on findings to live better on the planet. Let me give you some personal solutions. C is for context. So for me, even a single point in a big data set can be illuminating or informative. So I have a little Fitbit, which is like a fancy pedometer, and it tells me how much I walk and how much I sleep. And even one little point in there tells me, oh man, I am not getting enough sleep. 
my credit card. Infinite transaction history, sadly, how much we use it. You can download all those, and I'm too ashamed and embarrassed to show you the analytics behind that, but I use schema. I aggregated all my transactions to understand interactions, how I interact with my money and my food, and I realized, whoa, I eat out way too much. <laughs> As for synthesis, this is my last personal solution. Big data is a mess. What you need to do are find and use metrics or indices that simplify the big data that allow you to connect very different data sets. So my watch for training gives me loads of big data and I just look to the simple metrics like peak training effect to tell me how I did in a workout so that I can connect really different data sets. All that is ancient history. Smartphones have changed everything. 150 interactions per day. The average person is swiping and checking their phone that much. One to three billion people online every day. And that data is threaded and linked to you and geo-referenced and stamped to everything you do. So correlation does not imply causation. Wrong. Correlation always implies causation. The trick is to use it in a positive way in these big data sets to try and find the factors and things that are driving the outcomes that really matter. How, my, how I spend my money, how healthy I am, how much I'm sleeping. Only one minute or less, I challenge you on worldometers.info to see the volume of, of information accumulating, and you'll appreciate the need for simple syntheses. Two fantastic examples, one for health, the Cochrane Collaboration, and NCES, the National Center for Ecological Analysis and Synthesis, just a block away on State Street. So, ecology, Finn the adventurer, plus BMO the computer, big data, context, interactions, synthesis. These are really simple tools that procedurally and literally provide you as an individual and us globally as a society some of the, some of the tools we need to solve global challenges and make better decisions. Wow. Thank you.